This is Pixel Zoo, the show that dives into the wildlife of some of our favourite video games. But what can video game animals tell us about animals in the real world? Well, quite a lot apparently. Today we're looking at probably the most famous game world of all time, our favourite Italian plumber, the world of Mario. Mario has been appearing in video games for over 40 years. Don't say that makes him super old in front of your parents, as it will make them very sad. Okay. But did you know his first starring role wasn't even in a Mario game? He actually first appeared in Donkey Kong in 1981. Since then, there have been a huge amount of characters, both heroes and villains, based on animals and plants from the natural world. Clearly the creators of Nintendo were inspired in their artwork by looking outside. From gorillas to dinosaurs, Venus flytraps to aggressive turtles, the Mario world is full of nature for us to unpack. Here are some of our favourite natural world connections that you can find in plain sight across the Mario universe. Mario's first appearance was in Donkey Kong, where you play as Mario trying to climb up layers of platforms to rescue a girl called Pauline. Donkey Kong has a whole collection of other primates that join him in the other games, so just like as in real life, all the apes and monkeys of the Mario world are super social too. Gorillas live in social groups called troops, led by a dominant male called the Silverback, due to the grey silver colouring on his back. He defends a group of females and offspring from other potential males that may try to replace him. In the first Donkey Kong game, he threw barrels down at Mario to jump over, and this association with barrels has kept up even into the modern games. But is this even possible? Now, we know gorillas are strong, but are they strong enough to, like, pick up a barrel? And is that empty or full? And, like, surely it depends on, like, what it's full of. Like, what if it's got, like, I don't know, feathers? I think I'm overthinking this. Let's do the actual maths. An empty barrel, depending on the size, weighs around 50 or so kilograms. Say it's a 40 gallon barrel. That much liquid would weigh approximately like another 190 kilograms, sort of bringing the total up to about 240 kilograms if by maths is right. It's hard to measure strength, but a male gorilla is estimated to be up to 10 times strong as a human. And the record for an overhead lift for a very, very strong person is around 250 kilograms. <sighs> I'm so weak. Even with the average person being able to lift much less than that, okay, I feel normal, a gorilla is plenty strong enough. So not only could Donkey Kong lift and probably throw a barrel at Mario, he could do it pretty easily, barely breaking a sweat. So what did we learn from that? Well, gorillas are scarily, scarily strong and clearly spend a lot more time in the gym than I do. Now jumping on from our gorilla turned friend is another of the oldest characters in the Mario universe and that's Yoshi, everyone's favourite green, well, but I don't know, well what is he? Well it turns out according to Nintendo, Yoshi is actually a dinosaur, even though he's got a shell on his back, like a turtle. He also has some kind of spikes or mini sails on his back, maybe he's got Spinosaurus blood in there somewhere too. First off though, Yoshi's actual full name is T. Yoshisaur Munchakoopas. I mean, imagine having to spell that all the time on the phone every time you make a booking. Now, there's a T in there, and if it's like a T as in T-Rex, like it could stand for Tyrannosaurus, I guess? Which would make sense. Meaning tyrant lizard, Tyrannosaurids are bipedal dinosaurs with large heads and smaller front limbs. They were carnivorous too, often, if not always, top of the food chain. In some of the Mario games, Yoshi uses a long tongue like a chameleon to grab and eat creatures in his way. It's called a slingshot tongue. This kind of tongue is used by chameleons to attack and grip insects and then like whoop, pull them into their mouths. And oh my goodness, I have to say that's the first time I've actually seen that and it's kind of gross, but awesome, but gross. Now we don't know if any dinosaurs actually had tongues like this, but it does show that Yoshi had, uh, you know, a bit of a predator's lifestyle. Bowser is the main enemy in Mario World, usually kidnapping Mario's love, Princess Peach. Bowser looks like an enormous turtle mixed with a dragon. The original inspiration for Bowser as we know him today came from the Chinese soft shell turtle. A bizarre shelled animal that the designer said, the most aggressive turtle I know. 
These turtles are very strange creatures. One of their rarer talents is the ability to excrete your ear. Wait, what? In their mouths? Um, essentially, to wee out of its mouth. Which is one animal skill I'm glad that I don't have. Speaking of substances coming out of his mouth, Bowser has that dragon-like ability to breathe fire. Where did this myth of fire breathing actually come from, though? A popular story is that Komodo dragons may be the inspiration of this. Just like a snake, it whips its pink tongue in and out of its mouth, tasting the air like a sense of smell. And maybe it was kind of this flickering tongue that gave the appearance of fire. And now on to one of the most iconic villains of the Mario world. Almost everyone would recognise them, but far fewer people will be able to name them. Piranha plants, which makes a lot of sense. These vicious plants do their best at taking a bite out of anything that comes close to them. And despite there being no exact replica in real life, we think that they may seem like a combination of two organisms. I mean, first off, obviously, is the piranha. Makes sense. Okay, so these predatory fish aren't exactly like what you'd see in films with like humans disappearing into like a whole load of red zhuzhed water and then vanishing. Nah, but they will give you a very nasty bite and that's exactly what Mario's piranha plants do too. So we get that piranhas are predators, but plants? Well, actually there are far more kinds of animal eating plants than there are piranhas. Over 600 species in fact. They're not quite like piranhas or piranha plants taking bites out of you. Their method, though, is arguably a bit cleverer. They hunt using clever traps and tactics to entice their prey into their clutches until there's no escape. It is as cool and dramatic as that, to be honest. The most famous of these, and the one most similarly resembling a piranha plant, is of course the Venus flytrap, with its teeth looking like tendrils. This plant smells good to insects which land on it, and when a couple of hair-like tripwires are touched, snap! Yeah, the plant closes shut and digests its prey. Ugh. There are other methods that plants use too, like pitcher plants, which contain liquid and have slippery slides, so that when an insect puts a foot wrong, wee all the way down into a watery demise. And maybe some of my favourite carnivorous plants are the ones that use adhesive traps. These are covered in tentacles with a blob of, like, a glue-like liquid on the end, which looks a bit like nectar. Once an insect touches it, it gets stuck, and struggling only gets it more and more stuck as the plant rolls it up in a death grip. Whoa. As annoying as those piranha plants are in the game, and let's be honest, they're very annoying. It sounds like it's a much, much grislier end if you were to come into contact with them in real life. But we're not insects, so we're probably fine. Mario has been appearing in games for over 40 years, and he's run through tens and tens of game worlds. In many of these worlds, the natural world is a massive part of the inspiration, so it's no surprise that over the decades, a huge amount of biodiversity is shown in the Mario games. You've got walking mushrooms, ink squatting squid, more turtles, more dinosaurs, more gorillas, monkeys, flowers, moles, cacti, a variety of different birds from seagulls to penguins. I mean, that is a dizzying amount of biodiversity that our Italian plumber friend spends his time with. I mean, you'd think that he was a zoologist, not a plumber. Looking more closely into the life that surrounds Mario, it's clear to see just how much real animal knowledge Nintendo has crammed in into this amazing zoo of pixels. Join us for the next episode where we'll be diving into another of your favourite games and seeing just what we can learn about the natural world from its pixel zoo.